Hi, I'm Mario Batali. Welcome to Italy, the greatest market I know. Today we're cooking for Rhonda from Joplin, Missouri. First up, butternut squash. Next up, a little Parmigiano Reggiano. Great afternoon. Thank you, bud. All right. Heaven for a meat eater, wouldn't you say? I need some sweet Italian sauces. Fantastic! Fusilli lunghi, perhaps my favorite shape of all. So let's get cooking. Back in the kitchen, we're cooking for Rhonda from Joplin, Missouri, who chose butternut squash, sweet Italian sausage, Parmigiano Reggiano, the indisputed king of cheeses, and Fusilli Lunghi. First, I'm going to make a little bit of sofrito for something very much like a ragu bolognese. So I take half the onion, I take a carrot and celery, and I don't peel them. I chop them up into pieces. I take a pinch of salt. I take a glug of extra virgin olive oil. Then we just zap this until it's almost a paste. So we got it like that, and that's all I need. I put it right into the pan, cast iron, and enamel coating, and it immediately starts to cook. Now you wanna make sure that it doesn't burn, but you don't wanna coddle it too much, because you want it to cook relatively quickly. I'm gonna take the sausage out of the casing, in this case, we're gonna use four links. This would be enough for probably six people's worth of pasta or four really hungry people. Now we take our sausage and we crumble it. So what's really important when you're cooking sausage or any kind of ground meat is to make sure after it's been in the pan to allow it to almost dry out. As the fat comes out, and it starts to scorch just a little bit, creating that foam dough on the bottom of the pan, you've started to caramelize the meat along with the sofrito, which takes the flavor to an entirely different level. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take about a cup of any white wine. The one that I'm using is just the Prosecco that I drank for breakfast this morning. And I'm gonna add it into that, and what I'm gonna do is put it in my food processor, and I'm gonna zap it. What that's gonna give me is a smoother texture. So while I'm doing that, I'm gonna take a few of these cubes and I'm gonna put them in with extra virgin olive oil. I season them. Then I get back to my food processor. And we're gonna pulse. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Will give me the texture I want. Then what I'm gonna do is cook these for a few seconds and start to think about my pasta. I'm seasoning the water. So the salinity of the sea. For a gallon and a half like this, that's probably three and a half tablespoons. I take the pasta out. I dump it all in at once. I try to make sure that I submerge them as quickly as I can. And I cook my pasta until it's one minute short of package instructions. Now I dump that sausage back in like so. And I start to move it around again. Now keep in mind, at this point, there's probably residual raw wine in there. That's not gonna kill me. I have to cook this out for a minute or two. And then I'm gonna take a nice saucepan. I'm gonna put in some heavy cream, about a half a cup, season it with a pinch of salt. I'm going to add about a half a nutmeg. That's a lot of nutmeg, but because it's really, really good. So I'm gonna make this little fondue that goes on the bottom. So we bring the cream up to a boil, and then we take the noodles out of the boiling water. Now the nice thing about a pot like this is I can keep that starchy pasta water, which is the unsung hero of all pasta cookery. The noodle should be dressed by the sauce like a salad is dressed by the vinaigrette. So we don't want it very wet, but we don't want it too tight either. So if it looks like it's just a little tight, I'll take two or three tablespoons like so and just toss it in. Now, cooking the noodle and the condiment together the last minute is precisely the single most important thing you can do. So now I'm turning off the heat, drizzling in about three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, some Parmigiano Reggiano. I add a nice pinch of freshly chopped parsley, 
Stir that through. Now the fonduta is this reduced cream. I take it off the heat. I allow it to cool. I grate Parmigiano Reggiano in and it will slightly thicken and it will add some interesting value to the dish. And I put it on the plate like that. Take the pasta, put it right in the center of the plate and make sure I get a couple of pieces of the squash. And then to make it just dreamy, I put Parmigiano Reggiano over the top. Now, if you're feeling festive and it happens to be the fourth quarter, you pick up one of these white truffles and you just go like this. As you do this, you hear the heavens open and the angels sing. Rhonda from Joplin, Missouri, this is what you requested.